Hello at Bags, it's Jade. Welcome to another Tribes of Midgard guide today to defeating giants. Some little tips and pretty much how they all move to give you a little heads up just in case you haven't faced one of the four Jotan that are going to come and attack your settlement. Some of this stuff is going to be pretty basic as long as you've read the descriptions of the Yotan inside the actual game in the beastry and stuff because it does give you some tips about what their elemental weaknesses are. But I'm just going to give you some general ideas about their patterns so you can hopefully prepare next time you face one. Leave a like, go check out the rest of my Tribes of Midgard content. I've got bunches of guides all out there, so go and check it all out and let's go. So the Ice Giant, Gerador, I would say he's probably the easiest one to take on, especially solo. Um, he's got close range attacks and he does fire a Ice Projectile, which you're going to see. But overall, even though he's got quite a bit of legendary weapons and armor that you can craft, I still found him much easier than some of the other Giants. Now I did this in a big group, it was the first time I took on a Giant, so he has a huge amount of health compared to what they would with just doing it solo. But obviously you face him as part of the tutorial as well. Don't get me wrong, he can be pretty challenging. His ground pound there that unleashes ice attacks is hugely damaging, especially at this stage when there's so many of us, it's usually a one down hit. If you're playing it solo though, it should only be around six to 700 damage once again. He throws these huge balls of ice at you too. And again, a bit like the fire giant, it's kind of a bit mishappen. It doesn't really hit you as much. It's kind of a bit sporadic about where it's gonna go. You should probably easily avoid it or get out of the way. And unlike the fire giant, where you do get them little pools, tiny ones that do you damage, he doesn't seem to have any lasting effect that does you damage on the ground either. Although it looks like it does, I haven't really been damaged by it. Maybe it's because I had a good armor set, I'm not sure. But I'm pretty sure, yeah, you would still get some sort of damage just by falling into the ice there. But you can see I'm not taking any, nor is any of my teammates. So yeah, I nearly put him as the number one easiest one to take on, honestly, because he just doesn't have that many great attacks. It can take a bit of jumping and getting nimble to get out of the way of that as it is fairly big. So you maybe want to consider lots of range attacks again, taking him down from distance. Obviously susceptible to fire attacks. And again, they're pretty easy to get hold of with some of the starting classes. The Ranger and the Warrior, I do believe, both have some sort of fire elemental damage attack as well as the Guardian. So yeah, when you're playing this together, you obviously just need to be aware that someone's got to be around to revive you, just in case you all do get caught by him, when you may be a bit over-exuberant in wailing on him. And you can see the numbers popping up. The fire damage is absolutely doing the most damage. It's got a green arrow next to the orange colored damage bars. It does seem though that dark elemental damage does do a good amount of damage to him as well. Once he's defeated, you will get a bunch of the same resources. Obviously, you'll get a piece of his jaw and you're going to get some sapphires. You'll also get a anti-freezing potion. With them pieces of jaw, you can craft the Fjorn Hot set, which is a complete armor set, legendary gear. You can see really good, obviously, protection against the cold. And then you've got a special axe and then you've also got a special shield. So both of these are going to give you more protection against cold or ice damage. So yeah, I like I said, I've taken him on solo as well and it was still fairly easy. So I'm going to say it, I reckon he's the easiest one to take on. The second most easiest giant I would say is Logi at the moment. He is obviously a fire giant, you're going to need lots of protection against fire and any weapons that do ice damage. Logi is a pretty much close range giant. He has got an attack where he's going to fire flames or balls of fire at you from distance, but they're pretty loose. They're not as strong as some of the other giants with their range attacks. So don't be afraid to go ahead and pepper him from distance. Now Logi does have a, a bit of an area of effect damage, obviously with his flaming sword attack. When it goes into the ground, it's going to leave a pool of lava and molten fire. Now I didn't take much damage there, but that's because I think the height variation was masking it. Here later on when I was fighting him, you can see he does the same attack. And this time when I run into it, I start actually taking damage when I'm wailing on him. Seemingly it's like 100 damage every second or so, or half second. His foot attack pretty much does the same thing, although again, it doesn't seem as strong as the sword one. So you should be able to dodge out of the way or not get too damaged by it. Also, a little tip for all giants, it takes roughly four days for them to make their way to your encampment, from the day that you spawn anyway. After that, it might be a bit more different timings, and obviously it's procedure generated, so it's going to be different every time. There are definitely some maps I've been on where it's taken them a bit longer or a little bit shorter, but not by much. So whenever you see the words the giant is approaching or has appeared, 
leave it an extra day see if there is any kind of damage types that you might be able to get or go and take a look at the giant and see what one it is and then maybe think about going and getting the resources that will help you rather than waiting on him for like two days solid with just most basic weapons and swords now that's easier said than done usually every first giant that you come across you probably will be just using the most basic of items but back to Logi, you can see that he's got a little ground pound again, it's going to do lots of fire damage. He is very slow, just like lots of the giants. And this attack here, again, seemingly does a big area of effect. But in reality, it's only a small area it'll actually do damage in. So you can pretty much get close up to him, no worries. Also, if you're not big on range attacks at the moment. It definitely helps being a lot lighter and obviously making sure you're a bit more nimble using maybe a sword or possibly a light axe. Like I said, his range attacks aren't as strong because they're just not as fast. You can dodge out of them. But he does have this one, which fires a huge amount of fireballs all around in front of him. And it can do around 600 damage. But again, you can find that sweet spot, which is just in front of him using range attacks. Or just behind him as he's going towards the camp. You do usually also get plenty of notice that he's going to use his big flaming sword to dig it into the ground. I was just a bit wee slow and inexperienced there. Also, bear in mind, if you've got any armor at all that gives protection against fire, you're going to mitigate a lot of these. I had a perk that gave me extra damage for every piece of armor removed, so I was doing massive amounts of damage more to him. That's why it might be a bit stronger if you've not got as much damage when you're hitting him. But basically, it's a good idea to wear some sort of armor when facing this one especially. Most of the basic armor sets do have quite a bit of fire protection and ice protection at the beginning. It's usually dark and lightning that you have to go out of your way a little bit more to go and find or curate armor pieces. One particular nasty attack is his full swing of the sword though, where it does huge amount of fire damage, scorching through the ground ahead of him. Absolutely wiped me out there. His sword attack can also sometimes swing around, it kind of moves of 90 degrees. So again, I would say always try and get him from behind as you're going to avoid a lot of the swings of the sword. If he does turn around, you're clearly going to be able to see it and start dodging and moving out of the way. At this point, I was hitting him with my bare fist because my sword had broke, but I still had that special rune that was giving me that extra damage. I so wanted to title this video, I took on a giant with my bare hands, but I did end up getting a weapon when I went into my settlement. Now Logi is pretty close to this, like I said, this is the early stages, but I took him on many times afterwards, and I would say he's probably one of the easier giants to take on. If you've got ice elemental effects on your weapons, great. If you've got fire protection on your armor, great. They're the two things that you should focus on if you're taking him on. Use lots of range stuff, but don't get too afraid to go up a bit close and pulverize him, as long as you can quick and nimble and dodge out of the way. It does seem that every giant has the same drops in terms of giving you a health potion free. You're going to get some of the Yotan fragments and then you'll get each segment of whatever it is. So Halugi's Horn and in this instance I get a Heatproof Elixir from him specifically as well. Ancient Cores are also dropped by all giants as is Souls which have got 2000 in this one. And you generally do get a random rune as well. Halugi also drops some garnets and you can make the Masphilium Maul with the segments of his horn, a pretty badass hammer. Next we've got Angora Badard, she's the dark giant and I would say she's probably the third hardest. It's a real toss up close one between this one and just snacks are the lightning one because they both summon some sort of creatures or an item that makes it hard to defeat them and they've got a huge amount of area effect damage too sometimes. She'll bring forth three swirling pools and these cause damage when you walk into them so you've got to be careful and it takes up a huge amount of the space. When you get up close to her though it's definitely a case of using any lightning infused weapons that you may have. Ranger classes may struggle a bit here as I do believe quite a few of the perks are related to dark elements so you may need to mix it up or use a different weapon type. Now the hell things that she summons aren't particularly that difficult, it's just the combination of where she's also maybe doing damage to you sometimes and obviously it just delays you getting in at her. Has to be said, her aim for some of the stuff is pretty horrendous too. That portal has a big fist that comes out of it and yeah, it's pretty sporadic where exactly it hits. Again, summoning more mobs and more adds and yeah, this is where it can get a bit confusing when you try and take her on as well as all these guys too. Again, she does around six to 700 damage with every major hit or swipe of her. But apart from that fist that comes out the ground, she is actually relatively easy to get close to and really give a good pummeling. 
As she starts to lose more health though, she's going to summon even more of the hell things and this is where it gets a little bit more hairy. And you need to get a bit more range between you and her, just so you can take some of these guys out and not get caught by her attacks as well. It's too easy when there's five hell things all around you to get taken out and them huge pools underneath don't really help much either. So like all the giants, you're going to have to mix it up, sometimes doing a few ranged attacks. Again, I think that's probably the way to go with this one, especially if you have got a class or hunter class or one that's good with bows or you've got a decent bow, then absolutely utilize it and use all your special arrows as well. Being able to flick between this part and then moving in with your sword and shield to take care of the health things is going to be key in taking her on. Also notice that maybe ice damage isn't as strong against her as maybe fire. When you take a look at some of the hit markers that are popping up, the blue numbers are the ice damage and the orange numbers are fire. You can see there's much more higher numbers for the fire attacks than there are for the blue ice ones. So fire weapons would also be good for taking her on too. Not gonna lie, I was a bit salty. This was the first time I took her on and I was about to literally kick her ass, but I didn't pay enough attention to my tree as it got taken out eventually. In terms of drops, you're gonna get mana elixirs and you will also get strands of her hair. You'll need that to craft Sidian's Blade 4, which does a huge amount of dark damage and it does a pull or drain that will drain health from enemies underneath it. So it's pretty badass. A bit disappointing though, there's not many armor pieces or anything else really that utilizes her hair at the moment. So keep at least eight pieces just in case you want to try out that sword if you get a chance to craft it, but otherwise maybe sell the rest of her items to gain more souls. All these giants are hugely formidable. By the time they roll into your village, it's too late. You pretty much have to go and run for the Bifrost, unless they've got really low health. If they've got anything above halfway health, unless you've got some super perks or everyone's going to be waving on it, you just won't have enough time. They can wipe out your tree of life within 10 seconds. Something definitely worth noting when taking on the giants. And then finally we have Yarn Saksal, the lightning giant. Now she's got two forms, this one which looks like just a very tall lady and she'll summon forth four balls of lightning energy if you're playing solo, more I do believe if there's more of you. Now in this form she is still pretty tough, she's got the lightning damage there with her wand and then she can still do more lightning damage as well as attacking with her sword too. You can see the three tendrils of lightning going across the ground. It's all quite short range though, so again range attacks are the order of the day with this one. Unlike the ice giant or the fire one where you can get in pretty close as long as you can nimble and get out, this one I really do think you do need to stay away, especially when she gets into her second form, although it still might not help. Anyhow she'll fire another lightning ball at you that follows you and you kind of just got to run away as much as possible it took me a while to get used to dodging some of these attacks particularly the balls of lightning they're just really annoying like you can clearly tell when she's about to do that move so it should be okay to move out of the way it's pretty straight the way it hits again she's obviously going to do lots of lightning damage so any protection you've got against lightning is going to be helpful that might be a bit tough there's not as many items that give you as protection unless you've started crafting more of the advanced stuff and likewise you need dark materials or dark weapons actually that is probably a bit easier to get hold of i've definitely got some dark boosted swords or items early in the game fairly early Although it might have been more to do with my class, I do believe the ranger class has a good amount of damage types with dark. So maybe ranger would be the way to go. Now with these balls of lightning, you just got to let them folly up. In fact, it's a good idea just to stop and let them actually activate. Eventually, they will kind of destruct on their own. This one, you can't really wait for it to destruct. It will just hit you as soon as it gets you. And you can't really defend against it. I've tried a bunch of times, but I found it always really difficult. But yeah, with these balls of lightning, they will kind of eventually explode. Or just stop for two seconds, let them trigger, and then dodge out the way. This is the one that you've really got to look out for, though. Just run away from it, and it should dissipate. And when I started taking her on, she had 63,000 health, but then someone joined just before the last moment, and it boosted her health up to 74,000. So that's worth noting as well, just in case you are taking one on and you're wondering why suddenly she's got more health. 
There are different levels of the Giants as well. You can see this one's level 1. You do get level 2 and level 3, I do believe. And they're going to have huge more amounts of health ball. Now, you can see the Lightning Balls are much bigger now. There's like 10 of them now firing at us. So it does get a lot harder. And this is why it's good to actually get close range at this point. When she turns into this one, you do need to be close because you need to take on the totem that she spawns. It always gets summoned pretty close to her. If you don't take this out, it will summon bolts of lightning that can really damage you and mess you up. So range attacks when she's in her tall giant form and then going closer when she's turned into this sand or air form. This is the totem, you've got to destroy it, you can see it summon the lightning and it pretty much will always almost hit you, like it doesn't just appear randomly or hit randomly, it always seems to zone in on me. So yeah, always try and take that on as soon as it spawns. And this is why it's also good. By the time you're close to her, as soon as you see the ball spawn, you can just run away and eventually it'll explode. Whereas if you're range attacking, they'll come towards you and yeah, it can be a bit harder to dodge. So yeah, get as close as possible to take her on. She has got that swinging ground pound fist punch as well. So again, you've got to be careful with that. But again, keep at the back of her always as much as possible and you should avoid most of that attack. This is why she's definitely one of the hardest ones. In combination with all them lightning balls and then the random one that she'll follow and then the totem that spawns and summons the lightning attacks, this is why I rate her as the hardest. Now I was using my hunter class here and I do believe it leaves a fake little dark shadow for your creatures or enemies to hit. So it can be a good idea to use that class. You can see they're all swarming around my fake little spectral self. But this does mean that it's harder to get close to them. So be careful as well. You can't do much, obviously, if you've chosen the Hunter class. It's not like you can change classes. But yeah, just be aware if that is a class you're using against this. Got to be. Sometimes it's good for it to be distracted, but other times it stops you from getting close to take on some more hits. Anyway, this was a pretty bad run. That guy joining pretty much increased the difficulty and I ended up losing pretty close after this. But you can see the drops. More souls as usual more ancient cores you get a speed elixir from him as well the jotten fragments and you're going to get the uh Jan saxa brooches pieces now again these make some pretty cool armor sets giving you shock proof huge amount of protection against lightning damage and a good amount of protection against heat as well so it stands to reason that as well as maybe dark energy being good against her ice damage might also be really good this armor set is called the boulder armor set and you also get a shield with it too and you get a decent sword as well, the Baldur's Blade, which paralyzes enemies as well. So hopefully this little guide has helped you out, give you a few tips on how to take them out. It's pretty obvious. When you get up to them at the early stages, get in as much as possible and get some melee attacks. Move out of the way when she starts or the giants start pounding the ground near you. They are pretty slow. I've seen a bit of criticism saying the giants aren't that dangerous and they're pretty repetitive. But the idea is that you face them or they're a time sink. It might take a little bit of time, but you should maybe go and get a weapon or an arm set that is more appropriate to take on some of these giants rather than necessarily waste two or three days wailing on them. They are going to get harder as you go through the survival mode if you're playing on that mode or necessarily the saga mode. Either one, they will start increasing their health pools, I do believe, or getting extra levels so you get the level 1, level 2, level 3. So yeah, you definitely are going to need some better weapons to take care of each one. So it's worth crafting each elemental type if you do manage to get to that stage where you get the resources. In saga mode, it's all so much of a rush, you just better hope that some of your teammates have got some decent elemental damage types on some of their weapons too and you maybe just add some support. I kind of hope we get some better armors and weapons for Logi and obviously the Dark Giant as they do seem a bit short compared to some of the other stuff as well. And that is it. That is how to face the Yotan, the Jotan, the Giants, the big scary tall dudes. Leave a like if it has helped you this video. Go check out the rest of my guides and I'll see you right back for more Tribes of Midgard content soon.